एवरीवन दिस इज पूनम सैनी टुडेज टॉपिक विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम सो दीज आर द कंटेंट्स विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज द इंट्रोडक्शन नीड ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन पार्ट्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम सिग्नल्स एंड द ब्लॉक डायग्राम ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम सो वट इज अ कम्युनिकेशन इट इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ एक्सचेंज इन्फॉर्मेशन थ्रू मीन्स सच एज वर्ड्स एक्शन लाइक साइंस बिटवीन द टू इंडिविजुअल्स और मोर इज नोन एज कम्युनिकेशन सो what is the basic actually what is the basic communication there uh, the basic communication is i am uh, transferring my information to the other uh, other individual or many uh, two or more individuals by using many things like by using words by using actions by using signs so this is known as the basic communication the word communication means to share so uh, communication is the basic step for the exchange of information so for the in, for the exchange of any information communication is the most priority and the most basic one we can say that so what is the need of communication in today's world for any living being while ex- existing there occurs the necessity of ex- to exchange of information thoughts everything whenever a need for exchange of information arises some means of communication should exist so while the means of communication can be anything such as gestures signs symbols or language the need for communication is inevitable language and gestures plays an important role in human communication while sounds and actions are important for animal communication however some messages has been con- conveyed um, communication has to be st- established so f- uh, first of all we discuss that what is a communication communication is the process to ex- to exchange an information between the two or more individuals by using actions signs words etc so what is the need of communication by existing for existing in this world we have to exchange our information we have to exchange our thoughts we have to exchange our uh, everything of, uh, by using uh, words by using commun- by using signs by using our language so language and gesture is very important for a human being to exchange an information but for animal husbandry there are many things like um, sound they produce a sound to communicate between them they uh, they uh, create some kind of actions to communicate between them but in human communication we need a language we need a gesture to communicate between many or uh, some kind of um, individuals to communicate to provide information to ex- uh, exchange our thoughts everything so this is the communication system parts sender com channel and receiver like i am the sender this is the channel that this is the online uh, this is the channel this the channel is known as the presentation ppt presentation and the send receiver is the uh, the students which we uh, which which um, which is basically use this uh, channel to study so this is the communication between me and you to um, to uh, establish to you can say that uh, to communicate between us so this is the channel the channel is known as the pre- presentation and i am the sender and you are the receiver so this is the basic example i'm giving you now what is the parts of communication system so any system which provides communication consists of three important and basic parts the first is the sender the person who sends a message a person who ex- who wants to give an information about anything so it could be a transmitting station from where the signal is transmitted or we can say that transmitter transmitter sender anything the channel is the medium through which the information or the message is sending towards the receiver so we can say that a uh, channel is the any kind of medium like um, uh, by uh, by language by by um, by actions by gestures by signs so this is the channel the receiver is the person or anything who receives the message which 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 was already sent by us the sender and this is also known as a receiving station a receiver or anything so for any communication there are three major parts first is sender second channel third receiver sender is also known as a transmitter channel or a transmitter channel is a medium which we can say that it is a medium or a third one is a sender which is known as a receiving station or a receiver so conveying a information by some means such as gesture sound actions etc can be trans turned as signaling 
hence a signal is a source of energy which transmits some information from one to another so this signal helps to establish communication between a sender and a receiver so signal plays a very important role from sending information from a sender to a receiver so like um, for communicating from delhi to hyderabad we need a signal so by uh, by this signal the communication is going to be processed from delhi to hyderabad so the signaling process is the very important and plays a very key role for communication so an electrical impulse or an electromagnetic wave which travels a distance to convey a message can be termed as a signal in a communication system so you can uh, uh, just uh, look at this like like a uh, an electrical impulse or a electromagnetic wave that has to be travel to from a from a distance from a sender to receiver to convey a message this is known as a signal in a communication system depending on their characteristics signals are mainly classified into two types analog signals and digital signals so uh, there are two types of signals analog and digital in an analog there are two periodic a periodic in a digital there are two periodic and a periodic so the next one is analog signal a continuous time varying signal which represents a time varying quantity can be termed as analog signal this signal keeps on varying with respect to time means in an analog si signal you can see that like uh, you can see that like um, at zero position at zero at time position the capacity in is zero but at 30 the capacity is changed at 60 the capacity is changed so analog means the uh, variation is um, is going through that means varying with respect to time like in a continuous time signal continuous time means the signal has to change with respect to their time so at the time at zero position the uh, signal has uh, one output but at the one position the signal has different output at two position the signal has different output so it keeps on changing it keeps on varying that's it it is known as analog signal but on digital signal you can see that the monday the number of students are different but the tuesday number of students are different wednesday so at a particular time there is a uh, different digital uh, there is a different signal or the, we can say that there is a different output but between zero to monday there is no signal so a signal which is discrete in nature or which is discontinuous means at a time there is a solution there is a output but at a different time there is no output so the signals this kind of signal is known as discrete signals or we can say that this signal has individual values denoted separately which can which are uh, not based on the previous values as if they are derived at that particular instant of time so periodic signals are known as at a particular time the uh, pattern repeated the uh, previous pattern known as periodic signal so you can see that uh, analog or a, in a digital or analog at a part after a part after a certain time the previous pattern is going to be repeat after a certain then a previous pattern is already repeat after three uh, like after one second the previous pattern repeats after five seconds the previous pattern repeat after 10 seconds the previous pattern repeat this is known as the periodic signal in and in digital or analog signal that repeat its pattern over a period of time is known as periodic signal this signal has its pattern continued repeatedly and easy to be calculated the a periodic is reverse in, uh, that means there is no repetition it doesn't repeat its pattern over a period of time it is known as a periodic uh, signal and it is not easy to be determined or calculated so there are uh, uh, four type of signals which we are discussed analog digital periodic and a periodic so this is the block diagram you can see first is information source second is input transducer third is transmitter then channel receiver output transducer and noise is going to be added at the channel so what is input transducer the wide variety of possible sources of information results in many different forms for messages regardless of their exact form however messages may be uh, categorized as analog or digital the message produced by source must be converted by a transducer to form suitable for the particular type of communication system employed for example like 
for any communicate for for any communication for an example for a communication we need a electrical signal but at the transmitter the signal is not electrical so we have to uh, transmit the signal to a transducer so that the electrical the, the energy of electrical has to be changed from any energy to electrical energy then the signal is going to be processed so transducer is basically used to change the energy of a signal to a particular type of a communication system for like an example for for wireless communication we need a signal to be electrical but this original uh, but the original signal is not electrical so that's why we need to uh, transmit the signal from a transmitter so that the signal is going to be transmitted the signal is further going to be transmitted which is electrical with the help of transducer so this is the basic um, application of a transducer now transmitter the function of a transmitter is to process the electrical signal from different aspects like for uh, for a radio broadcasting the electrical signal obtained from sound signal is processed to restrict its range of audio frequencies and uh, in wired uh, telephony no real processing is needed however in long distance radio communication signal amplification is necessary before modulation so modulation what is modulation it is the main function of the transmitter in modulation the message signal is superimposed upon the high frequency carrier signal so that the last signal is is the uh, desired signal the signal which we are after the transducer the signal the, which is message signal is superimposed with a high frequency signal carrier signal then we got the desired signal this is the pro, this is the main function of the modulation so we can say that inside the transmitter signal processing such as restriction of a range of radio frequencies amplification and modulation of signal are achieved so all these processings of the message signal are done just to ease the transmission of the signal through the channel so what is the channel the channel means the medium through which the message travels from transmitter to receiver in in other words we can say that it is the function of the channel to is to provide physical connection between the transmitter and the receiver so we that physical connection that like transmitter to receiver to trans uh, to transmit the signal from transmitter to receiver we need a channel so channel is basically pro, uh, provide us the physical communication between the transmitter and the receiver so there are two types of channel point to point channels and broadcast channels so we can use any kind of channel for for uh, communicating from transmitter to receiver so in case of microwave links the transmitted signal is radiated as an electromagnetic wave in free space microwave links are used in long distance telephone transmission an optical fiber is a low loss well controlled guided optical medium optical fibers are used in optical communications so what is a noise during the process of transmission and reception the signal gets distorted due to noise introduced in the signal noise is basically an unwanted signal which is tend to interfere with the required signal noise signal is always random in character so noise may interfere with signal at any point in the communication that's why noise has its greatest effect on the signal in the channel so it is the it basically it adds uh, in the process of transmission receive reception at the signal uh, get distorted so this this is an unwanted signal and there is a random in character so that's why it when it added in the signal the signal always get distorted so uh, next is receiver receiver at the receiver point we need the original signal for that original signal we have to um, uh, uh, we have to like uh, change the energy of the signal first of all so the main function of receiver is to reproduce the message signal in electrical form from the distorted revised signal this reproduction of this signal is processed known as demodulation at the transmitter we did modulation process in which the message signal is going to be superimposed with the high frequency signal but at the receiver we have to demodulate the signal and then the demodulation process after then the demodulation process the original signal is going to be produced at the receiver end so this is the basic block diagram of the communication system with the help of with this we can communicate from uh, we can transmit the information from transmitter to receiver so in this uh, we already we discussed that uh, uh, what is the communication need of communication parts of communication system what is signal need of signal what there are type of signals and block diagram of communication system and the uh, different aspects of a 
communication system we already discussed in the next topic we discuss about the modulation and demodulation process thank you